All right, so let's let's go over this once again. Simple explanation. We have a thermistor here and a thermistor here. One of them is to use to control what? What is what is one of the thermistors here control? The the heater. The defrost heater. Usually that it's located on the suction line. But remember, this is connected to the other evaporator in series. Even though we have a dual evaporator system, that the Freon coming from here goes through the ice maker on this pipe here, and then goes to the refrigerator or freezer evaporator on the bottom, and we have thermistors down there. So this unit here has a thermistor. This damper has a thermistor. And the evaporator cover, this one here, has a thermistor and a fan, right? So let's talk about, we got thermistors everywhere, even the ice maker compartment. There's a thermistor inside here for temperature because if we turn the ice maker off, we can turn it off, we can, we can make this warm. But if we had ice in there, it would melt everywhere. So we have to have something to make sure that this compartment's cold enough. And the ice maker itself has to have a thermistor so that when the ice maker fills with water, it knows when to drop. Oh yeah, that's all right, I'm not gonna hold it. Um, but let's talk about these thermistors, okay? So this is a damper. Most refrigerators have a damper that's to control the freezer air coming up here to cool the refrigerator compartment. And we don't use that damper to control the refrigerator compartment. This damper is the air is coming off the evaporator from this fan and blows out into the fridge and this thermistor here is the one that's telling the refrigerator the temperature. And I'm going to get into what we were just talking about in a minute. So this damper is the air coming out here also runs down from inside this cover, comes out this opening. And that opening is right here. And when the fan's running, it forces air here and comes out there. And I showed you guys, like I took a screw and dropped it in that hole there. And it came out this one here. So that's the tube. And so this is for the vegetable and crisper drawers on the bottom. So this here is controlling the damper. Like if it's too cold, the damper will close the door so that it won't make it any colder. So one of the things we were just talking about was uh, if, if a thermistor fails, what happens? Okay, so if this is an evaporator in series with the other evaporator, it doesn't have a step valve that says, okay, the refrigerator works separate from the freezer or the freezer works separate from the fridge. What do we do? Well, we have to have a way to control the fridge separate, even though if this refrigerator compartment was 34 degrees, we don't want it any colder because it's going to freeze my milk and water and everything else. But what if our freezer was 50 degrees? Well, the thermistor down here is going to tell the board, hey, it's not cold enough. That compressor will not shut off. But then you're saying, but wait a minute. If this is cold enough up here, wouldn't it freeze the food in here? Why wouldn't it freeze the food in the fridge then? Because it's not, it's not at low enough. No, no. If, if I'm 34 here and I'm only 50 here, it's supposed to be zero down here in the freezer. The, the, the thermistor is telling the board down here, hey, it's not cold, cold enough. The board's going to say, get the freezer colder. What do we do with the fridge? Because I said... On most dual evaps, it sends Freon to one compartment or the other compartment and only cools that compartment. But there's no step valve like this. this one has no step valve, so the Freon comes in through one evaporator. Both evaporators are right. always getting Freon. Well, actually three if you count that tube for the ice maker. But all three of them are getting the, the Freon at the same time. Right. I cannot shut off the Freon here right. even though I'm calling for cooling here. So in other words, how do you get the freezer? What can I shut off? The evaporator fan? The fan. Yeah. So if the refrigerator compartment's at temp, but the freezer's not, or vice versa, freezer's at temp, but the fridge is not, if I just turn the fan off, yes, it's going to be cold back here. This is insulated. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be cold behind here, but the fan's not blowing the cold air throughout the box, so we're not going to freeze the compartment. Oh, okay. So if one thermistor fails in the fridge or the freezer, and the board is thinking, hey, it's warmer than it's supposed to be or cold it's supposed to be. These fans here are controlled independently. Where on an old refrigerator with a thermostat, when a the thermostat's on, all fans are running, compressors running. 
When thermostat's off, everything shuts off. But now with a control board, we can control different components individually. So if this compartment's not cold enough, turn a fan on. If it's supposed to be at 34 and it's 36 in here, the fan will run, but just run, just chill. It's just running slowly. But if you come home from grocery shopping and you say, well, let me clean it out before I put all the groceries in. You got the doors open, you're cleaning, and it got real hot. Well, now this thermistor says, hey, it's 50 degrees in here because I had the doors open for 20 minutes. This fan will run at maximum speed. So these newer fans, these DC-powered fans, are variable speed fans. So when there's a high demand for cooling, the fans run high. When it gets close to the set temperature, if I set 34 degrees, what happens as we get close to 34? The fans slow down. Why do they slow down? Because if I go 34 and just shut it off, I shut it off. Why do the fans slow down as I get close to the temperature? No, not because of the thermistor, but imagine a freight train. I'm running. I'm running 100 miles an hour down the train tracks, and I know three miles up the road, I got to stop at a station. Does a train go 100 miles an hour until it reaches the station and stop? No. If I try to step on the brakes when I reach the station, what happened? I slide right through. Right. So I know three miles down the road, I got to stop, so I start slowing down as I get to that point. Yeah. So I stop at that point. So cooling-wise... If if I wanted 34 degrees, I can do the old school thermostat where when it reaches temperature, say it's, this is the temperature, and it's hot here. Now it's cooling, 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 cooling. And at this point right here is where the thermostat opens and shuts everything off, right? But because it was going so fast and running so fast, it's going to still continue to go a little bit colder past that point. Just like that train, if it doesn't slow down to the station, it's going to slide right through. Well, we always have, when we control temperature, heating or cooling, that we always have an average of two temperatures. The coldest temperature and the warmest temperature, and you add those and divide by two, you're going to get the average temperature. But if you have variable speed fans and variable speed compressor, as they get closer to the set temperature, just like that train three miles away from the station, everything starts to go slower. So when it gets to that set temperature, everything shuts off, you may just go a little bit past, not a lot past. And the thing is, is that the temperature swing from on and off of your compressor and your fans on a mechanical thermostat unit is a very big swing. So imagine buying milk. If I bought milk and it says the expiration date is the 21st of this month, and I put it in the fridge and don't touch it, it's going to last till the 21st and maybe last a day or two more. But if I'm opening and closing the door and I take the milk out, leave it on the counter for 20 minutes and I put it back in the fridge and then I use it again later that day and take it out and leave it. Every time I take it out and leave it where the heat is, the food, the food or the milk, whatever, is slowly degrading. So these newer refrigerators now with these variable speed compressors and fans try to cut that on and off time to a closer cut in and cut out. So the less temperature swing you have, the longer your food's going to last in your refrigerator. And then if we can slow the compressor and the fans down, we use less electricity. So therefore, the refrigerator is going to be more energy efficient and be more accurate in temperatures. And your food's going to last longer inside your refrigerator because those temperatures are more accurate to the set temperature that the customer selected. So we have a thermistor sensing the suction line. We have a thermistor sensing the evaporator. Well, this is not the suction line. Suction line's over here. But one thermistor is so the refrigerator knows for defrost. When the defrost heater on the bottom here comes on to melt the ice, the defrost thermistor is going to tell the board, hey, it's warm enough back there, shut off before we cook the food. Now, let me ask you a question. We have different types of evaporators. I was talking about a Sub-Zero a little bit earlier, a side-by-side Sub-Zero. had two separate compressors and two separate evaporators and condensers, two separate systems and one big fridge, okay? Now, if you look at most of those evaporators in the refrigerator, their evaporator does not have a defrost heater. 
So how do they get away with that? The temperature that they run the evaporator. Normally on a refrigeration system, we always talk about one specific temperature the evaporator on a freezer should be. What is that temperature? The evaporator on its temperature. The temperature of the evaporator negative 15. Minus 15, like minus 15 uh, degrees uh, evaporator. Well, on okay. Unit. On any unit. On any unit. The pressure is different from 600 134, but both the evaporators are 15. Yeah. You got to look at the new yeah. page that I'm developing because I, I explained that in the page. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if it's running 15 degrees minus below zero, this thing would freeze all up and we have to defrost it. And this evaporator is in series with that evaporator down there. So we have no control separately of those evaporators. Whatever that pressure is, is that pressure. But on the sub-zeros, the evaporator does not run at 15 degrees below zero in the refrigerator compartment. We only run at 15 below zero because we want what temperature in the freezer? Zero. So the evaporator has to be 15 degrees colder so that, the, so that the air can get to zero. So what temperature am I trying to achieve in a refrigerator? Like, no, about 34, 36. The closer you can get to freezing, the better without freezing. Okay? So if I had this at 15 degrees below zero, yes, I can still reach that temperature, and we're doing that with this one. This runs 15 degrees below zero. Okay? We just shut the fan off here when the temperature in this compartment's reached. But on the sub-zero one, what they do is they run the pressure about I don't know, it's like 22 to 25 PSI or something like that. And that puts the evaporator probably about 20 degrees. So it's just below the, te the set temperature, maybe 25 degrees, 20 degrees, somewhere in there. So it's cold enough to absorb heat from the refrigerator and get 34 degrees in the fridge, but not that cold. You say, yeah, Richard, but 20 degrees is still freezing. Yes, it is. But it doesn't build up as much frost as... 15 degrees below zero. And what temperature is this box when we're running? 34. So if the unit shuts off and reaches temperature, the ice that's on the tube will melt because the air in the box is 34 degrees. It's not cold enough to maintain the ice. So it still has a drain in that unit, but you'll see no evaporator. And people have to know, if you have an evaporator in a refrigerator compartment, and it has a defrost heater, it's going to run at 15 below zero. Okay? If it don't have a heater on it, we're not running 15 degrees below zero. We're running closer to that 34 degrees, but not 34, like you know, about 10, 15 degrees colder than that. Well, let me ask something, Mr. Rich. Would that be considered the temperature difference? Yes. Okay. The temperature difference really, when you're talking about air conditioning and you say yes, TD, yes, yes. A temperature difference is air coming in versus air coming out. Yeah. We want a 15 degree average temperature difference. Right. If it's 70 degrees coming in, we want 55 coming right. out. Right. 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 Okay? So here, the evaporator has to be that 15 degrees colder or we'll never get the air 15 right. degrees colder than the air coming out. Right. Okay? So on this unit, it's in series, but we can control the fans and each fan can be controlled independently. So if the freezer is at 10, imagine you come home, you're like, oh, I'm going to cook some dinner. You never go in the freezer. You're in the fridge doing this and that. Is your freezer temperature getting warm? If I don't open the door, no. Oh, if you don't open the door, no. No, I'm in the fridge, not the freezer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And these two are not connected by air. At all. Not. No. So it'll stay cold, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then when I close the door, the sensors are all going to say, well, the freezer is good, but my fridge is too warm. So what's it going to do? It's going to what? If, no, no, it's not sending oh, it's a cold. It's going to start the compressor. Oh, well, yeah, the compressor. And what's going to start cooling? Only the refrigerator fan. The freezer fan isn't even going to turn off. So with the fans, we can, we can call for cooling. And with one compressor, with one system, we can independently control them. We do have twin cooling, yes. But but they're all one temperature. 
And just by controlling the fans and the compressor, we can control the different compartments. We don't need the two-way valve. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So we, yeah. But yet, two-way valves are good too, but now it's an additional component to the system that can fail. Where, yeah, you say, well, you got two evaporators here, but how often does the actual evaporator itself fail? No, but a motorized two-way valve could probably have more faults or failures than just tubing because there's no moving part inside this evaporator. It's just pipes. Most you might get is a leak or restriction. So we have a fan, and this yellow one's the thermistor for here. Let me see that other compartment uh, cover there, that white cover right here. We don't have a thermistor here, do we? Okay, so we have an evaporator fan here. Also, look, it's got three wires. First of all, when you look at the wires, if you see these real, real thin wires, you know they're low voltage, probably DC. You can read on the fan motor. It's inside this case, but you can read on the fan motors. They usually say 12 volts DC. And it's variable. The, the voltage may vary depending on the fan speed. But a lot of them are called square wave, where like most voltage we see goes like this. Like, like, like. But a square wave goes up, over, down. Over, up, over, down. And how fast, how fast we pulse them. You know, it maintains a specific speed. Where if it ramps up, it goes fast, real fast, and it slows down. Where, where it goes up, it goes from zero to 60 in a second, and it's running at 60 till it stops, and it goes back to zero. So the square wave allows us to, like, pulse it at maximum speed. Okay, so there's got to be a thermistor in here for the freezer compartment. Now if we look down here, we have a thermistor again on our suction line. We have another thermistor here. And we might have a thermistor inside this compartment that I don't know of. I don't think so. Oh, here it is right here. So this is the actual freezer thermistor that tells the board the temperature. Those are telling you defrost and monitoring the refrigerant flow through your evaporator to know whether your evaporator is doing good or not. And if we go back to this top one I pointed out earlier, but if we catch it on the video, is that we talked about the defrost heater and we have these two ends of the heater here and inside this plastic are those thermal fuses remember on our r600a unit mm -hmm. i don't know if it's a code that came out now but all manufacturers are putting inline fuses oh, wow. these fuses most fuses are amperage draw fuses the video i did on this on the samsung refrigerator remember the it was a two or three part video where I talked about the boards in the back oh, of the yes, fridge. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, those fuses were on a little board in the back of the fridge. So those are amperage draw fuses. If there's a short or something like that, these fuses are, they can still go bad on amperage, but these are thermal fuses. These fuses fail if the temperature gets too warm back here, because if the heater gets too hot and the pipe in here bursts or break, we're talking about R600, a flammable refrigerant, we could have more serious problems. So by a thermal fuse being on both sides of the circuit, why do we have two? Why can't we just put one fuse? Because if the fuse is bad, we just put the fuse on the L1 side. There's no voltage. Why would we put fuses on both sides? Well, there's not L2. It's neutral. It's a 120 volt unit. Just well, two, well, well two, two reasons. One, what if the polarity in the wall, the line one and neutral, is reversed? So now your neutral is line one and, and, and the other side's there. Plus, if your heater was to break right here and short out right here, and one side of the heater touches this, then I want this fuse to control it. But if the other side of the heater touches and shorts over here, then I got a fuse on this side, no matter where voltage is coming in. But either way, I got a way to shut it off. Way, way shut it off. Okay. So that's why they have these thermal fuses on these new refrigerators. And you could test it just by going to this wire and this wire over here and ohming it out. Right. It would read just like a regular heater, 30 or 40 ohms. Right. And if, it, if one of those fuses are bad, you just wouldn't get a reading. Oh, 
and you don't just change the fuse. If you look, this comes as a plug, a complete assembly, this whole, this whole thing. So you're going to change both these thermistors and the heater. Why? Because if the heater got too hot, not shorting out, but the heater got too hot, these thermistors here were supposed to tell the board, hey, it got too hot. So if you went and you saw a bad thermal fuse, by changing the heater, you get the heater working again, but did you fix the problem of why it got hot and blew out the thermal fuse in the first place? No. Maybe one of the sensors there, they're supposed to tell the board temperature. There's the one to tell the board, shut the heater off. So rule of thumb, change them all. Change them both. You, it, the it, it, the it's all part of the harness. It, oh, so it's all one assembly. You, you can't, all unless you cut it and wire it in, <laughs> you order this heater, it's going to come with both thermistors. Right. There you go. Okay, that's okay. Good. So, again, this ice maker box has to have a thermistor inside the compartment. It wouldn't be on the. Uh, I think it might be part of this little plug right here. Look, there's a plug right here. That might be a thermistor in the compartment. It wouldn't be on the line down there. That's the ice maker. Now, we have a fan. Auger motor, crush cube solenoid. Um, I don't see a thermistor in there, but I see these two small yellow wires, which we've been following all over the place. <laughs> yeah. There might be a, might a be thermistor there. buried in there. Yeah. Look at this. You guys probably didn't notice. You see these little wires here? Mm -hmm. See those little wires? What do you guys think that those wires are for? These two little two dark wires here. Wire. He what heater? I meant, um, the evaporator. This, 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 oh, this yes. tube is the evaporator. It's not like a regular evaporator in a refrigerator, so it has no defrost. Okay, oh, but yeah. what is this? For the water, right? The water. For the water. The water comes in here oh. and goes to the ice maker. You're right. It was a heater. But it's a fill tube heater. This is the tube that fills the ice maker water. When the ice maker sends water, it comes in here. But to keep the tube from freezing, they wrap it with a little tiny heater, very low wattage heater, but enough to keep it warm enough that the fill water doesn't freeze the delivery tube. But still, I think there's a thermos. Oh, there it is right there. Look at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see that there? The two yellow wires that I said they're here, these low voltage wires? That's the thermistor here for this compartment. So this is controlling where the fan is. If the ice maker compartment's cold enough, we just turn the fan off. Again, this is part of that evaporator. So if other compartments are warm, but the freezer, this ice maker compartment's cold enough, we can just shut the fan off. Freon's still flowing through the pipe. But the fan's not running, circulating the air, and that thermistor there is what's telling this unit that. Then you got the ice maker. Here. And there's got to be a thermistor inside there, right? It's probably built into this unit. I don't, I don't see it. A lot of times they're on the bottom of the mold here. But there's got to be a thermistor in here, right up against this mold. I mean, if we were to take it apart... You probably see a thermistor sandwiched in between here, and that's what senses the temperature of the mold, so that the mold knows, hey, drop the ice. Mm -hmm. So it fills up a water, 40 degrees, 70 degrees water, whatever water temperature you got coming into your fridge, fills this up. Once it reaches cold enough, like 18, 20 degrees, it says, hey, drop the ice. And that thermistor in here is what's telling the board to drop the ice. Now, I think it might have a control board in here which is running independently of the main control board. The main control board doesn't control the ice maker. It may turn it on or turn it off, but the main board doesn't tell the ice maker to drop ice. If you have ice in the mold and it's not going into the bucket, your problem is in here. Unless what? Unless what? Unless you, you have a... Uh Leak air leak or something like that? Air leak or your compartment's not cold enough. Oh, because what if that fan was to fail? The compartment won't get cold enough. So if you had a bad fan motor, the thermos is going to say, hey, it ain't cold enough. It's going to cool, 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 cool. But the fan didn't allow it. 
So if you see ice in a tray, it's possible you could still have ice in a tray. Why? Because this is a metal mold and it's actually attached to a piece of tubing the Freon's flowing through. So it's gonna get cold. But the whole compartment is not that cold to maintain it, so it's gonna take forever to make ice, if it makes ice. Okay? So we have thermistors in here to control the damper. We have thermistors in the two compartments controlling the fans. We got thermistors in the box controlling temperature. How many thermistors did we find? Nice. Got two there. One, two, three, four, five, two more on the evaporator, six, seven, and one in the freezer, eight. Eight or nine, eight or nine thermistors. And it may have an ambient thermistor on the outside. What do you think an ambient thermistor is? On the, on the electronic board? But, but why, why do we have an ambient thermistor? Because you don't want your temperature outside to drop lower than the temperature of the refrigerator, which you, what you... Not lower. Or higher. See, the outside one is next to what? what the, the condenser and the compressor. What, oh, that's what, weird. Okay, what okay, you know, if it's, if it's 40 degrees outside and 60 degrees in here, how hot's the condenser? Not that bad, right? But it, if you're 90 degrees or 80 degrees inside the house, you got more heat in the condenser, right? So we put a variable, variable speed fan on the condenser. It got too hot. The thermistor outside is saying, run the condenser fan fast. If the temperature's okay, we'll drop that fan. That's your refrigerator calling for ice. I, I bet you it's that refrigerator right there, the ice maker calling for water. Yeah, turn the ice maker off and then you won't hear the solenoid call for water. So there's a lot of thermistors in here. And the reason why I have you guys open this all up is so you guys can see all these compartments and these evaporators in here. And this refrigerator, because I noticed on that one right there, I mean, you all was... Uh, from shooting that one there, it actually tells you the temperature. You, you can you can access the temperature of each thermistor. Mm -hmm. And this you board. can do this yes, too. It does the same thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now um, Thursday, uh, I want to have the Whirlpool one open, and then we'll lecture on that, and we'll talk about its system and its controls. Okay. And then um, I wanted one more, the GE French door. Yeah, okay. yeah, we'll point out those components and everything. I think that one of these have two compressors. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you can, you know, if you want, yes. Okay, you can. Cut.